And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I was watching a video from another content creator about some of the worst cards ever printed in Magic. Um, it's an interesting watch for sure. And as I tend to do, my thinking was, hmm, challenge accepted, right? Um, this is a video that you know, possibly I could turn into a series, but I thought, why don't I take some of these supposed worst cards ever printed and see if I can figure out or see if we can figure out how we can fit them into Commander decks. That's what's great about the Commander format is it is a great place to find cards that normally don't get played anywhere else that can fit in the Commander. There's lots of examples of that, obviously, but also even going a step further, you can even, and I have done it before, played cards where people are like, oh, why would you ever play that? I mean, you, you play it because it's Commander and, and that's sort of the, the, not the purpose of the format, but it's a possibility in the format, right? You have the possibility to try to make these really, really bad cards work. And in my opinion, when you take a card that people look at and they like make a face when they see it, it's so bad and you actually make it work well, that's just icing on the cake for me, right? I take this really, really bad card and then I end up winning a game with it, you know? That to me is is really where it's at in the Commander format. I'll give you a perfect example to start out with. One with nothing is an infamously bad card. I remember when that card came out. Why would you want to discard your hand, right? Uh, funny enough, I just finished doing a deck doctor for my patron where he had a Baron Glory deck. There's a reason you want to be using it, right? They, they want no cards in hand to, for the Baron Glory win, so one with nothing allows them to discard their whole hand, right? So despite the fact that you look at one with nothing, and I guess anyone who's new to, to Magic or maybe doesn't play Magic at all would look at that card and go, what? What a ridiculous card. It actually does serve a purpose despite the fact that it looks like it's terrible. There are, however, cards that are just so bad that they mentioned in this video that I'm like, nope, that ain't happening. Like Kamal's Sledge, for example, I'll use that to start out with because there are cards that have been printed in, in Magic that I can't think of a reason, you know, and those ones I skipped over. So this is five red, red sorcery. Kamal Sledge deals four damage to target creature. My goodness. Um, so there are cards like this that, in my opinion, I can't possibly think of a reason to ever play them outside of I just want to be casting really expensive spells. Obviously, there are commanders where that is a thing, where I just want to cast a seven mana spell. Now, if you were doing that, you probably find better options in this. This is, man, when I was watching that video, I was like, this is one of the worst cards I've ever seen. I've never seen it before. I'm not familiar with it. One of the worst cards I have ever seen. It, like, it's absolutely terrible. It has threshold. Instead, Kamal Sledge deals four damage to that creature and four damage to its controller. If this card didn't have the threshold, if it was just deals four damage to our creature and it, its controller as well, it would still be one of the worst cards ever printed even if the threshold part wasn't in there, this might've been a situation, like a lot of times when they introduce new mechanics, like threshold, when they introduced it, they're, they're playing it safe because they don't want to go too far. But I mean, come on, seven mana? At sorcery speed to deal four damage to a creature is so bad, it's almost, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even want to say, like, why would you ever play this? This is one of the worst cards I've ever seen. It's horrendous. I will say a lot of these cards I'm talking about coming up though are pretty bad. Again, I am picking out cards specifically from that video so that I'm being unbiased here and I'm trying to find a way to use them. So let's start out this list talking about Chimney Imp 4 and a black Imp 1-2 with flying. When Chimney Imp dies, target opponent puts a card from their hand on top of their library. This is a five mana 1-2 with flying, which is horrendous and the payoff is not super good either. However... In the commander format, again, we can make creatures like this okay. This is an imp, first of all. There's not a ton of imps, and we do have imp tribal now. So there's one reason to play it. I don't know if anybody has this in their imp tribal deck. Because you are very limited on the imps that you can play in a commander deck, it is possible people are playing it for that reason. I will say, though, that this does do the Chittering Rats thing. And Chittering Rats was a, I mean, same set, right? Chittering Rats was a, uh, that was a very competitive deck in, in some format. I can't, maybe it was standard. Putting a card from their hand on top of their library is, can be really, really bad. You can actually lock an opponent out. That's what happens there with the Chittering Rats situation. That's another situation where this could be good. Putting it on top of their library so they just keep re redrawing the same card. That works better in 
two-player formats, not nearly as good in a four-player format. It's not great, certainly, but th there is a couple of situations where you could use this card. Avon Trooper, another very overly costed creature, three and a white, bird, soldier, one, one, with flying. That's not great. Uh, two and a white, discard a card, Avon Trooper gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. Funny enough, this is also from Torment. Um, pretty famously bad set, I think. What I'm doing here, again, just reiterating, I, I am taking these cards that I have seen. I'll just say I kind of like the art on this card. That's at least one reason to play it. I'm trying to find places that we can use it. Obviously, this is a really bad card, but I'm trying to figure out ways we can use it, right? It's a bird soldier. So, hmm, bird tribal, maybe? Or bird soldier tribal. Certainly you could probably find better birds, but this is one. Mostly we want to use that ability, which of course isn't great. Three mana discard a card just to give it plus one, plus two until end of turn is pretty bad. However, maybe I'm in a Zerta deck, right? So now that cost is reduced by two, so it's only one white mana. Discard a card, get plus one, plus two. You know, so now it gets all of a sudden a lot better. If I have something that I get, I get a payoff from discarding, it also gets a lot better. If I'm in a white deck... Again, this is why cards like this might get played in the commander format, maybe. Um, because in white, it's not super great for the discard theme. There, there's not a lot of great support there. So it might, maybe, if you if you were hard up and you were in white and you were looking for a discard outlet, this could be one. If we play through the Zerta scenario where this guy costs one white mana to activate this ability, I discard seven cards <laughs> my whole hand uh pays seven white mana then this guy is a eight you know whatever that's still not great um but again in a white deck it's not a horrible discard outlet i guess keldon battle wagon oh boy i i am familiar with this card and again this is from prophecy another sort of notoriously terrible set so five mana artifact creature juggernaut Hey, there's already a reason to play it, right? You could play it in the Juggernaut Tribal deck. O oh, three. Again, another reason to play cards in the Commander format, at least for me, is the art. And I love the art on this card. Kev Walker, one of my favorite artists. Fantastic art, I think. So it's an O oh, three with Trample. Keldon Battlewagon can't block. Yeah, it's to be expected with a Juggernaut, right? When Keldon Battlewagon attacks, sacrifice it at the end of combat. Oh boy. So you can only use it once? Okay, that's pretty brutal. Um, tap an untapped creature you control. Keldon Battlewagon gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is the power of the creature tapped this way. Hello, that's actually not super terrible. And I will point out some places where you can use this card. And again, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I'll just throw up my Sigrid deck that I used to have. I don't have it anymore. I made that deck almost entirely because everyone was crapping on that commander. You know, I'm, I'm just, that's just me. I guess I have a defiant spirit or something. When everyone's telling me a card is absolute garbage, that makes me want to play it more because again, it's the upside is bigger, right? If, if you win again, this goes into my mentality with commander and building decks and all this kind of stuff as well. If I win the game because I have a Consecrated Sphinx and a Smothering Tithe in play, okay, congratulations. <laughs> oh, I cast a Cyclonic Rift and then I won. Everyone's like, yeah, whoop de doo right? Everyone knows you won because that's just a really powerful card. If you win games with cards like this, man, it's, I think it's, not only does it feel really good, but everyone else is patting you on the back as well. No one's patting you on the back if you win a game because of your Cyclonic Rift or because of your Thassa's Oracle or whatever. If you actually pull off a, not a win, but just a great play with a card like this, I like to see it. If you manage to kill someone with this horrible creature, man, they would almost be thanking you for it because it would be so unique and interesting, right? Now, how are we going to do that? That's the important part here. This card is actually not the worst fit in the world in my Lulu deck. The reason why is because I can tap down all my creatures with it, which is what I want to do in that deck. So I'm already throwing out ideas here, okay? When it attacks, sacrifice it at the end of combat. Okay, that's the revolt trigger on my Lulu. So actually in a Lulu deck, it's not a terrible fit because I can use it to tap down all my creatures, get in a, a big attack, and then if it dies in combat, who cares? And sacrifice the end of combat. Now I get the revolt trigger on my Lulu. And in my deck in particular, it's an artifact recursion theme. So I can Goblin Welder and get it back the next turn or at the end of turn or whatever, right? And repeat the process. Is this a slam dunk in that deck? No, but I like Kevin Walker art. It's a funny, janky old card. It's 
traditionally considered a horrible card that I could actually make work pretty good in that deck. So any deck where you are wanting to tap down your creature is actually not a bad fit. Sacrificing or, you know, artifact recursion strategy, not a bad fit. Um, I will point out, sacrifice it in the combat. So you get in for damage and before it sacrifices itself, you can sacrifice it again. I can do the Goblin Welder thing where I can sacrifice it to get something else back before it sacrifices itself, right? Any theme where you're sacrificing creatures, that actually will work. It is an O3 in the graveyard. So it might be really easy to get out of the graveyard because it has a really low power. I'm coming up with lots of ways to use this card, actually. I'll throw out another idea here where you could use this. Um, the Phyrexian Dreadnought scenario, right? So Phyrexian Dreadnought comes down and, and this is just a niche idea, but it is an idea. Phyrexian Dreadnought comes down. Of course, the trigger on that card will force you to sacrifice it. But in response to that trigger, you tap it to your Keldon Battle Wagon and your Keldon Battle Wagon is now a 12-3, right? And not the greatest combo ever. Also works with the Sacrifice Artifact theme, but you could make a whole deck like that. And I did make a deck like that, a Ruhan of the Four Mori deck um, way back in the day. A commander that, again, for me, I mean, I might talk about in the five builds video because that to me was a commander that was always built the same way. It was always a Voltron strategy and I didn't like it as a Voltron commander. And I liked it as a, again, the Phyrexian Dreadnought strategy where I get a high powered creature for cheap with a really bad downside. And I use it for things like this rather than I randomly attack some person, right? So if we look at Ruhan, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you choose an opponent at random. So what's going to happen is at the beginning of combat on your turn, you're at the beginning of combat phase, you're going to randomly pick an opponent, who, however that may be. If the opponent you happen to choose is someone you don't actually want to attack, and again, you can get no politics thing here, what you can do before you actually declare attackers, before you go to the next step, you just tap down your commander, right? You just tap down your Ruhan to your Keldon battle wagon. So now your Ruhan doesn't have to attack that person that you have made the deal with. That's actually a good thing to do in a Ruhan deck anyway. And now I have a 7-3 trample creature that I can attack with, right? So that's another way to use a card like this that I actually think think, and the more I think about it, this is actually not a bad card. A lot of neat ways to use it. All right, Keldon Battle Wagon was way too good. So now we have to get back to some of the worst cards ever printed, like Aladdin's Lamp, pretty infamous, 10 mana artifact. And funny enough, when this was originally printed, I believe it was printed with two fives because they didn't have an actual 10 for the for the card so it was printed with five five uh pretty funny pay x and tap the next time you would draw a card this turn instead look at the top x cards of your library put all but one of them on the bottom of your library in random order then draw a card x can't be zero so of course i'm reading the errata text here essentially what is happening here is the next time you would draw a card so on my draw step so this is right before I, my draw step. I'll do it on my upkeep, right? I'm going to pay X mana. And instead of drawing a card, it's replacing your draw. I will look at the top X cards in my library. I'll put all but one of them on the bottom of my library in random order and then draw a card. So essentially I'm putting one of them into my hand. I'm not sure why the wording that way, but whatever. Essentially, I'm looking at the top X cards in my library and putting one in my hand, right? Now, that obviously is awful if this card was one mana, okay? Aladdin's Lamp, if it cost one mana to cast, how often would people be using it, I wonder? If this was only one mana, how often would people be using it? Would they be using it at all? <laughs> maybe. I mean, it's not bad, I guess, for one mana. Hmm, maybe, because now I could pay two mana, look at the top two cards in my library and put one on the bottom and put one in my hand. Oh, that's still not very good. <laughs> um, okay, I'm trying to figure out a way to use this horrible uh, I mean, this is, again, a classic example that, that people point out as one of the worst cards ever printed. The only way that I can think of where this is actually not a terrible fit is in any deck, and I know it's it would be silly to do so, but you could, in any deck where you can <laughs> produce infinite mana. I know that's a bit of a cop-out. However, in that situation where you can produce infinite colorless mana, I mean, obviously, if you can produce colored mana, it works as well, but even if you just produce colorless mana, and also if you produce... And and I'll just throw my Val deck out there, right? My Val deck that I talked about a few weeks ago, that deck has a couple of different ways to produce infinite colorless mana. 
that could very easily be used here. I'll just use that deck as an example of where this would fit. Again, it's doing the mana cost thing where it actually does matter because Tavern Brawler is your background. So if you flip this off the top, so now your commander is going to get the, the plus 10 bump. That's pretty good. And if you have like your Keeper of Secrets in play and you cast from Exile, you're going to smack an opponent for a bunch of damage. So that actually works there. And then you can use your commander, of course, to help pay casting it. So it's not the 10 you don't really care about now. And then once it's in play, now it's actually not a terrible way to sink your ma your commander's mana into it. You know, it's actually not bad, but if you get into the situation where you have the infinite mana, what this ends up becoming, again, it's it, it certainly is niche and it's janky, but what this ends up becoming, if you have the infinite colorless mana situation with your Val, is every time you draw a card, well, I guess you have to tap this, so at the very least on every one of your turns, when you get to your draw step, you just activate this with infinite mana, however many cards you have in your library, and it essentially becomes two to your library for any card, right? Because at the beginning of your, you know, right before your draw step on your upkeep, you will activate your commander's infinite mana loop, put, you know, 70 mana into your mana pool, whatever, whatever you have, right? You will look at the top 70 cards of your library, which is, of course is your entire library. You'll pick one card that you want in your hand, and then just shuffle, essentially shuffle your deck and put it back. It essentially becomes, if you got infinite mana, search your library for any card and put it in your hand. I know there's better ways to do it, but that is a, a really neat way to use this card. All right, let's do one more here. Another pretty bad artifact, Assembly Hall, five mana artifact, pay for and tap, reveal a creature card in your hand. Search your library for a card with the same name as that card, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle. And of course, I added this one on purpose because I just did my same name deck. My Drell new deck is my Persistent Petitioner's deck, which is, again, just a very janky, interesting theme that normally does not work in the Commander format, but does work in very specific scenarios like that. I can have any number of a certain card in my deck. Uh, as far as creatures go, obviously this is not going to work with Dragon's Approach or Slime Against Humanity. Persistent Petitioners, Relentless Rats. Is there another Rats one? There actually is a fair amount of, of decks where this does actually work. The Seven Dwarves one, if you're doing that, this will go get a Seven Dwarves. The Wraiths one is probably the big one. I think you can have nine of them in your deck. That is where this actually, again, it's not great, but... You know, you slap this down and people are like, what? Twinning Glass is another one that, you know, really janky card that normally would never work in the commander format where, okay, well, I got my Twinning Glass and I get my Assembly Hall and now I can start searching, tutoring my deck for wraiths and casting them for, you know, one mana, sort of. <laughs> it is a little mana intensive, but it is a way you can use this very typically bad card in the commander format can be... Uh, not great, but okay in those situations. I would not find room for this in my Persistent Petitioner's deck because I, I reveal a Persistent Petitioner from my hand, pay four mana to go get another one. Not super worth it. It might be worth it with the Wraiths thing, maybe. I mean, it's a lot. I know people will look at this card as they t always do and go, nine mana to search for a creature? I mean, you're paying nine mana for the first one. You're only paying four mana for the second one. And if you're in a color, if you're not in green... How are you searching for creatures, right? If you're not in black, how are you searching? Like, it gets tough in, in certain colors, right? I mean, it's a bad card. Yes, absolutely, guys. I'm only talking about bad cards here. But I'm, I'm trying to find fun, interesting ways to use these cards, and that certainly is one. This is a card that is, I think, playable in those situations of I actually have a lot of creatures in, the, in with the same name in my deck. All right, that is it. That is all. Uh, just a, a little thought experiment, maybe. I was, I was watching that video and I was like, the funny thing is, they they mentioned a couple cards that I thought, oh my God, like I couldn't believe, like Kamal Sledge, I'm like, I can't believe how bad that card is. But then they threw out a couple cards where I'm like, hmm, maybe we might have something here. And you know what? Keldon Battlewagon. Man, I might have convinced myself that that's actually not a bad fit in my Lulu deck. I might give it consideration. <laughs> um, I just love playing really janky cards like that, and it actually kind of does fit there. That's what's great about the Commander format, is you can find these horrible, awful cards. And funny enough, the Aladdin's Lamp is not a terrible fit. I mean, it's not a great fit, but it actually kind of works in the Val deck as well, so... That's what I love about the Commander format, and, you know, I, I might continue on doing this, where I just keep looking at these awful, awful cards and trying to find good places where they fit. 
It's what I love about this format. You guys let me know if maybe you're using any of these cards, that would be phenomenal. If you guys were actually using any of these essentially awful cards in your decks already and making them good. If you are, let me know in the comments below. That is it for today though, and thanks for tuning in.